Hello friends, welcome to G Century. So in this lecture, we will move on to the voltage division rule. So in the previous lecture, we have completed current division rule and we have seen some problems based on the voltage, uh, sorry, current division rule. So in this lecture, we will see how the voltage gets divided across resistors, inductors, capacitors and impedance. Okay. So here in this circuit diagram, we have one voltage source and two resistors R1 and R2. So we need to find the voltage drop across R1 and voltage drop across R2. So let that voltage drop be V1 and V2 respectively with R1 and R2. So now the condition for applying voltage division rule is that it is applicable only for one loop. If there are multiple loops, then we cannot apply the voltage division rule. So how we will write if you have to calculate the voltage V1. So we'll write it as V1 and the voltage of the resistors that we want to calculate, we'll write that resistor only that is R1. So in current division rule, it was opposite. Whereas in voltage division rule, if you want to calculate the voltage of this R1, then you will take the re that resistor only and sum the two resistors that is R1 plus R2 and the total voltage is V. So if you want to find the V2, we'll take the same resistor which we have to calculate the voltage. So that is R2 upon summation of the two resistors multiplied by the total voltage of the source. Okay. Coming to the inductor, it is also same, same rule applies if resistor follows, it follows the resistor. Now to calculate this is V1. So this V1 is equal to L1 upon summation of the two inductors multiplied by total voltage. So if you have to find V2, it is L2 upon L1 plus L2 multiplied by the total voltage. So coming to the impedance, similarly, if you want to calculate V1, it follows resistor. So take the impedance of the same, which you have to calculate V1, then summation of the two impedances multiplied with total voltage of the circuit. Then V2, it is Z2 upon Z1 plus Z2 multiplied by the total voltage. Coming to the capacitor, it runs opposite to the inductor, resistor and impedance. So if you have to calculate V1, then take the other value of the other capacitor C2 divided by summation of C1 plus C2 multiplied by total voltage. Similarly for V2, it is C1, C1 plus C2 summation multiplied by total voltage. Okay. So what we have to do if we want to calculate the value of the voltage across this R1, we will take the value of that resistor only and divide it by the sum of the resistors multiplied with the source voltage. So this is the current division rule. So based on this division rule, we will see some more numericals. Okay. We will come to this problem. First problem, they have asked us to find the energy stored in a capacitor at steady state. So capacitor is here. So we need to find the energy stored in this capacitor. We know that formula for finding the energy that is W or E is half CV square. Okay. So this is nothing but VC square because we are finding across the capacitor. Okay. So this is in the form of we will call one more name that is electrostatic energy. So we need to find this value from the voltage across this capacitor. Okay. So to know that, to find that voltage, to find that energy stored in this capacitor, what we have to do? We have to move a KVL in this loop. So we will get the VC. Move, before moving into that, this is a DC source. So what will be the uh, effect of this DC source on the capacitor? It is nothing but it becomes an open circuit. So this is open circuit and we have to find this value. So when this becomes open circuit, the voltage flowing here, sorry, the current flowing in this branch is zero ampere. So there won't be any voltage drop across this 10 ohm resistor. So it is zero volts. So when we apply KVL to this, we need to know the voltage across 40 ohm resistor as well as voltage across the 30 ohm resistor. So once we find the voltage up, uh, in, in these two resistors, then we can move, uh, move around the loop 
using KVL and we can find out this VC. So what will be the equation to find out the VC? Apply KVL here. So if the current is flowing in this way, this will be minus and plus and here it is plus and minus. Okay, so it is plus and minus. Okay, so it is minus V40 ohm then minus V30 ohm this that is 10 ohm across 10 ohm it is already 0 drop and this is plus Vc equal to 0. So Vc is nothing but V40 upon V30 ok. So this we can add these two voltages to get the Vc voltage. Now in this parallel this potential and this potential both are same and this potential is also same because there is no element connected in between these two branches. So if it is 100 volt here, here also it is 100 volt and here also it is 100 volt. So this 100 volts get divided with these two resistors and this 100 volt get divided across 40 ohm and 60 ohm. So if we know this value and this value then we can apply KVL. Okay, so we will do that applying voltage division rule, we will find the 40 ohm uh, voltage across the 40 ohm resistor. So to find that V40 is equal to, we will take V40 uh, plus summation of these two resistors 40 plus 60 into total voltage from the source. So this 100, this 100 gets cancelled, it is 40 volt. Similarly, we do not need to find the 60 ohm voltage that is because we only need the loop of this one. If you are applying KVL in this loop then you can find the voltage across 60 ohm and 20 ohm. So to find the 30 ohm V30 is equal to 30 upon 50 into 100. So this 0 so it is 60 volt. So when you add this one 40 plus 60 so this will be sorry this is like this plus and minus and here it will be minus ok. So Vc you will get it as so minus V40 is 40 minus 40 and this is plus 60 which is equal to 20 volts ok. So the voltage across the capacitor is 20 volt and here it is 0 volt that is because 0 ampere current is flowing through this resistor. So there won't be any drop. Now once we have found out this we will use this formula to find the energy stored in the capacitor. So half into C is 2 farad into 20 whole square. So it is 400 joules of energy stored in the capacitor. Now we will move on to this second problem. We have to find out steady state voltage across each of the resistor. Okay, so to find that observe this, this voltage division rule we can apply reverse also. Now this 14 volt appears across this 10 farad as well as across these two capacitors also that is 5 farad and 2 farad capacitors also. Now to find the voltage across each of the resistors we know that directly 14 volt is appearing here to the 10 farad. So V 10 farad is equal to 14 volts. Now this voltage division rule we will take the reference as 2 farad or we will take any of the references it does not matter because we need to find both the uh, voltages across both the capacitors. So we will take if you have to find V 5 farad across 5 farad capacitor then in voltage uh, division rule applies opposite to the resistor rule. So you will take opposite resistor upon 7 into total voltage. So this is 4 volt, 4 volt of voltage appears across this 5 farad. Then coming to 2 farad it is 5 upon 7 into 14. So it is 10 volts. Okay. So now one conclusion can be made if the value of the capacitor is less then the voltage is high and if the capacitor value is more the voltage is less. It is compare, comparing two quantities. Okay, so universally it is not true, but for the understanding purpose, whenever 
you find a small capacitor having small value then the voltage across that capacitor will be high. So, based on this concept we have uh, in gate the question has come. So, we will see that question. Okay, coming to the question number 3. So, this is a big question but the answer to this is very simple. Okay, so 3 capacitors C1, C2 and C3, C1, C2 and C3 they have the values of 10 microfarad. So, this is 10 microfarad, 5 microfarad and 2 microfarad. So, they have given the values of C1, C2 and C3 and the maximum safe voltage. So, what do you mean by safe voltage is that the capacitor should not burn out. Okay, To that maximum voltage you need to find that safe voltage. So, the maximum voltage that these capacitors can withstand together. Okay, So, that can be applied across the combination and corresponding total charge in micro coulombs stored in the effective capacitance across the terminals are respectively. So, first we need to find the first thing is find the voltage across them safe voltage then second one we need to find the total charge stored in the capacitor. So, that is nothing but Q is equal to C into V. So, we need to find the C equivalent and the voltage and we need to find the charge. So, now we will redraw this circuit here. Okay. So, this is C2, C3 and here is C1, C2, C3. So, now what we will do? We will apply a, we will apply a voltage source for this plus minus V. So, okay. we know the values across them. This is 10 microfarad and here it is 5 microfarad and here it is 2 microfarad. So, whatever voltage appears here that will be appearing here also. Okay. So, we have seen in the last problem that if the value of the resistor is small then the voltage will be high. So, if we consider this capacitor with the small value then we will get the maximum voltage that these all three can withstand. Okay. So, this will be the reference for the calculation of the safe voltage. Okay. So, we will apply that. So, if you have to find the voltage across this one across 2 microfarad then capacitor it goes opposite to the rule of resistor. So, it will be opposite capacitor that is of 5 microfarad and summation of them 2 into the total voltage we need to find here. And for them the or all these 3 they have even given the safe voltages sorry I think I have forgotten to write that yes it is 10 volt 5 volt and 2 volt. So, 10 volt 5 volt and 2 volt. So, these are the 3 capacitance value to be included here. They have given the voltages across each of the resistor. So, here it is 10 volt and here it is 5 volt and here 2 volt. So, this is the voltages given for each of the capacitors. So, the total voltage I need to find, but I know the voltage across this 2 microfarad it is 2 volts. So, 2 volts upon 5 by 7 into V and V is equal to 14 upon 5 which is, is equal to so, so 2.8. So, 2.8 volt is the voltage across safe voltage that has to be applied to get the so that the capacitors does not burn out. So, once we get that we will carry they have also asked us to calculate the total charge in micro coulombs stored across this effective capacitance. For that what we need to do we need to find the equivalent capacitance. How we will find equivalent cap capacitance? We know the value of the capacitors <coughs> sorry. So, the if it is in series then we will apply the formula of parallel that is 5 into 2 upon 5 plus 2 and it is in parallel with 10 uh, sorry 10 microfarad. So, it will be in series. So, 7 upon so 10 upon 7 plus 10 which is equal to 80 by 7. So, this is the effective C equivalent C equivalent. So, once we know the C equivalent also 
we can find the okay let me write it here q is equal to c equivalent times v so we know c equivalent that is 80 by 7 into v is 14 by 5 we will take this one so it is easier to simplify 5 ones are 7 ones are 7 twos are so it will be um, 5 ones are 5 3 30 so it is 32 volts so we have got 2.8 and 32 volts so option b okay 32 coulombs micro coulombs okay so this is the uh, you know hidden hint for the solving this problem so if it is having the lower capacitor value then the capacitance uh, the voltage across this capacitor will be high so using that no, uh, knowledge we have solved this problem so this completes the unit 4 basic solving techniques in the next unit we will move on to the advanced solving techniques where we will see nodal analysis mesh analysis and source transformation okay thank you